I'm Dr. Eric Insko, and this is Karen Marino. Okay, Karen and I um, decided to, to do some team teaching in this course as we were forced to go online kind of unexpectedly about a month ago. Um, and we found that, that doing this as kind of a, a duo was more exciting and more fun than just talking. I think I get kind of monotone if I talk for too long straight, like just plowing ahead. Um, and luckily, Karen has taught this class many, many times. I think you taught four sections of this this last semester. I did, yes. And I've only taught this course once the entire time I've been at FGCU in eight years. So I'm a novice. So Karen's going to be our expert and, and tell us what we need to know. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and start with chapter one, which is basically just the vocabulary um, that we're going to be using throughout the semester. So it's called the nature of probability and statistics. We're going to do a lot of terminology and a little bit of examples, but I'm going to go quickly so that we can, because um, we're going to see a lot of this stuff over and over and over again. Is that about right, Karen? Yes. Should I say anything else? No, that sounds good. Okay. So statistics is the science of collecting and organizing, summarizing, analyzing, and drawing conclusions from data. And you may not be able to see that because our, our faces are right there. I'll move it over. Okay, so in, in other words, statistics is like data science, and that's sometimes what stats is called. So why should you study statistics? Well, you need to be able to read and understand the various statistical studies performed in your fields. Um, if you're in business or science or sociology, um, psychology, you're going to be re reading a lot of statistical studies, and so you need to be fluent in this language. Um, you may also be called to conduct research in your field. I find that like our scientists, like our, our like lab scientists and our water scientists in the water school, they know a lot more about statistics than I do because they work with it every day. I'm, I'm a mathematician, so I usually work with pure math and pure numbers. They're the ones that are going out and, and conducting studies and, and just reporting the stats. Um, finally, it's to become better consumers and citizens. You may not all become scientists, but you're all going to be citizens, or you're all already citizens of some country, and you're already consumers. And so you need to be fluent in this language because, um, let's see, marketing firms are really good at, at misusing statistics. You know, there's a lot of studies that show that you should buy this new hot product like, I don't know, fish oil or snake oil because it's going to have some great benefit for you. Um, and that may or may not be able to be true. And so you need to be able to look at the data and make the decision for yourself. Should I say anything else, Karen? No, just that, um, you know, data is all around us and we're constantly told, you know, different um, polls and surveys and, you know, stats every day, whether we realize it or not. So it is good to kind of um, have more knowledge about it. Cool. Perfect. Yeah, it is all around us, right? I don't know if you guys can see, but my shirt says, let's go Cubbies. And, uh, you know, baseball is probably one of the most statistical sports there is. Okay. Um, so a variable is a characteristic or attribute that can assume different values. These values um, are called, what are they called? Data. Okay. So an example, a study is conducted on a relationship between attendance and grades. What do you guys think? You think if you show up to class, you're going to do well? Well, in this class, you can't show up to class, but you can watch the video lectures. So there's probably a strong correlation between showing up and watching the video lectures and doing your homework and getting better grades. Okay. So what's the variable there, Karen? Well, there's two of them. It's the attendance and the grades. Right. Okay. Yes. Cause we're looking for um, things that assume different values. So your attendance can either yes or no. And the grades is either A, B, C, or D, right? Or some percentage, I guess. Okay. Um, a random variable is a variable whose values are determined by chance. So grades are not typically determined by chance. Usually it's like if you put in a lot of effort, you get a good grade. Things that would be random would be like coin flips. A coin flip could be either heads or tails. Um, other random variables that you can think of? Um, well, that's what we're going to spend pretty much all of chapter four talking about. We'll get into random variables and we'll deal with probability when Perfect. we get there. Okay. That's why we're lucky to have Karen because she's taught this class so much that she doesn't let me go off on tangents. She just says, no, no, we're going to cover this later. So we're lucky to have her. Okay. Population versus sample. So a population consists of all the subjects that are being studied. That could be like the entire population of the U S um, which, you know, we can collect census uh, data every 10 years. And that's where we try to get information on every citizen or every um, person in the U S a sample is just a group of subjects that are um, selected from the population. So the sample is always smaller than the whole population. And so inferential, inferential statistics is where you try to like study the sample and then infer what's going to happen on the population. I think I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, 
Okay, so there are two main branches of statistics. There is descriptive statistics. And so that's where the uh, stats consist of the collection, organization, summarization, and presentation of data. So this might be like um, the statistician is trying to describe a situation. Um, states facts directly from the data. Inferential statistics consists of generalizing from samples to populations, which I just said, and performing estimations and hypothesis tests, and then re determining relationships among variables and making predictions. So again, inferential might be you look at someone's attendance, uh, attendance data and then try to decide what grade you think they might get. Um, or let's see here, generalizing means the statistician tries to infer something about a population based off data from a sample. Okay, so I mean, these, these vocabulary words are pretty so straightforward, right? You have descriptive is describing and inferential is inferring. So hopefully you can remember that. Anything else I should say, Karen? Um, no, but we're gonna do an example now where we kind of practice Perfect. telling the difference. So. Okay, do you wanna walk us through the example? Um, sure, so it says, um, the first one is the average jackpot for the top five lottery winners was 367.6 million. So would that be descriptive or inferential? Uh, I just spoiled it, but it's a descriptive, right? And yeah. that's because we're just describing what happened, the top five lottery winners. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but my daughter just says she has to go potty. Okay, um, so descriptive. Yeah, it's descriptive, yeah. And it's because it's like, in my own words, it's because it's based you know, directly off the data. So you could easily, you know, figure out what the top five lottery winners um, were and then just find the average of that. Um, part B says, because of the current economy, 49% of 18 to 34 year olds have taken a job to pay the bills. So if you look at what that statistic is about or who it's about, it's 18 to 34 year olds. So that would basically be your population. And since it would be impossible to actually have collected data from every single 18 to 34 year old, that tells us that that's an inferential statistic. So basically we're generalizing from that sample to the entire population. Right, perfect. Sorry, I muted myself for a second just because of the uh, my daughter announcing. <laughs> Okay, part C says, in 2011, there were 34 deaths from the avian flu. So, descriptive or inferential? That's descriptive because we can actually look back at 2011 and say exactly how many, um, how many deaths occurred. Or we can at least look at, look at what happened and, and say that that's what we think it was, 34 deaths from bird flu, avian flu. Okay, finally, scientists at the University of Oxford found that a good laugh significantly <laughs> raises a person's pain level. Karen, take it away. Okay, so that would definitely be inferential. Um, and there's a few different ways that you could explain it. Um, I think the one that I went with was saying that you're determining um, the relationship between laughing and pain tolerance. So that would be determining relationships among variables, if you want to show that. Yep. And there are like a couple other ways that you could um, explain that. Basically, for different descriptive and inferential, I would say that descriptive is just more factual. It's just looking at the data and just, you know, in a very straightforward way, just reporting, you know, um, different aspects of that data. Whereas inferential, you know, you're kind of using your brain a little bit more to actually like determine something or state what you think might be happening or something like that. Something a little bit less factual. Okay, section 1.2, variables and types of data. I think I'm gonna stop it here and see